experiencing the town around you in a completely different way by travelling to work every day on a skateboard kind of inspired you to think, well, how can I experience different places on different kind of modes of transport? So this was, this was the, the idea behind it. Yeah, absolutely. I think just the exhilaration of experiencing something I already thought I knew really well in a completely different light, purely because of the way I was travelling, um, just, just caused me to completely change the direction of my life. And it's been, it's, it's kind of been the, the background focus of, of everything I've done since. Um, it, it really amazed me that happiness could just come along like that. And realistically, I, a year earlier, I, maybe I could have gone and bought myself a longboard and, and had it for an extra year of my life. And I kind of had this frustration that I hadn't skated for the first 25 years of my life. And therefore, man, what could I have achieved? So from, from then onwards, it was, I'm not going to waste another minute. I'm going to experience the world in as many different ways as I possibly can. And you know what, I can do exactly the same journey in exactly the same place in the world using two different forms of transport and have a completely different experience. So that's, that's the basis of Expedition 1000. And I, I've done two of them already. Uh, in 2006, I skateboarded across Australia, um, which is a really foolish thing to do. And then... Uh, in 2009, I kayaked and walked from Source to Sea along the Murray River, which is also in Australia. It's given me a kind of a bipolar but wonderfully convergent lifestyle in which when I'm, when I'm ready to go on an expedition, I'm ready to go on an expedition. It, it may be kind of the, the main kind of background source of my income now, but I only go when I really want to go passionately in my heart, and that's really important for me. I don't want this travelling malarkey to at one point become a chore purely because is how I make my living. I, I won't have that. There's no way. So I separate my life. Um, you know, I, the, the edges are always blurred. I'll go away. I'll, I'll have an amazing expedition. I'll do things that I've never done before and I'll be filled with, with everything that that gives a person. And then I'll come back and I'll, I'll kind of relive it in a few ways, which is, you know, writing about it or putting all the photos together, um, you know, just, just sprucing up the website or making a film about it. And then, as soon as that process is, is almost coming to an end, almost instantly, I'll be thinking about what I'm going to do next. And uh, so, yeah, life, life is incredibly different, but um, everything, everything works in a really nice balance at the moment. And I'm still learning that. This kind of, this kind of thing doesn't come around uh, overnight. The idea might, but it takes a while to, to make it work. And as long as you're willing to chase that, then that's okay. So what's the difference between... Uh the idea and the application, what's the difference between seeing back and having an idea, thinking that would be great, and doing it? Everybody sits in a pub and has ideas, talks about stuff that they might do, but they wake up the next morning and they've probably even forgotten about them, or they think, that's ridiculous. And life carries on. Um, and we all, we all quite happily make excuses not to do things that um, are dreams, effectively. You know, they're, they're things we know we'd enjoy. But it's too hard. Um, it could be too physically exhausting. Maybe it costs too much money. Maybe we've got a job and we can't take time off because holidays are important. You know, things like this. There's always, there's always an excuse. And the difference between having that idea and letting it go and having that idea and turning it into reality, for me, it's let's do it. It's that simple. And now I'll, I'll walk down a road and I'll see, I'll see a form of transport I've never seen before and from 50 metres away I'll see it and think, I'm going to travel a thousand miles on that. Let's do it. Rather than, I could travel a thousand miles on that, but I don't know what it is yet and I'm not sure how I'm going to get hold of one and you know, I'm not going to get my paycheck at the end of the month if I do. It's a shame, but oh, I've forgotten about it now. It's all right. Just let's do it. You've just got to make it happen. It's that simple. I love creating things. Um, and if I'm, if I'm travelling along a beautiful river, for example, I want to share that. So part of my journeys are updating my website on a daily basis. I travel with a laptop, and I'm not at all ashamed to say that sometimes I'll pull over onto you know, just this paradisical beach. That's not even a word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> On, on a river in the middle of an Australian desert and I'll pull my laptop out and, and put a little USB f uh, flashy in and, um, and I'll, I'll beam some photos and some blogs up onto my website so people all around the world can, can see what I'm doing. And I know that sharing that is 
a kind of an unselfish way to almost justify those selfish three months I'm spending going down a river because it's it's incredibly selfish. You know, I'm I'm doing it for myself because it's it's brilliant. And there's nothing wrong with being selfish if you balance that out. And I've got people all over the world who who go off and and do their own little adventures, whether big or small, or they or they raise money for charity, or or they just do something different because because they've seen the way I communicate my journeys and and they want to feel that passion for themselves. And that's that's really all I could ever ask for. You know, I don't care if I don't sell another book or another film in my life, as long as I can keep doing what I do. And, and now and then I get an email from someone saying, wow, I'm doing it too. It's cool, eh? Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all. You know, life's so important. We live in a, just in an amazing, amazing world. And yeah, maybe, you know, some stuff is changing and, and we damage it in our own way. But we're certainly not going to heal it if people don't care about the world around us. And I think combining sport and travel is just a great, a, a great way to, to encourage people to take care of the planet around them. You know, just, just in our own little world, we've all got to do our own bit. And there's a lot of people around. If they all do their own bit, we'll be just fine. Certainly for me, experiencing so many different countries and people and places and, and oceans has just completely opened my eyes to not only the potential for my own life but the possibilities for everybody's mm -hmm. and it's important to be open-minded I mean we've, we've got access to so much information these days um, and it's important to get that from a primary source sometimes through our own eyes I mean we could you know I meet people who, who just know a huge amount but they've never been out of the UK and therefore they think they know a huge amount because they believe what other people have written and that's not to say it's not all true but some of it isn't and I know the only things I know actually are the things that I've experienced and seen I know now the benefits of it I know how good it is to get out of your, your daily routine which kind of sticks us in our own little box you know we we wake up in a box and we go to work in a box and then we sit down and and work in a box looking at a box and then we go home in a box and we come back to a box and it's really nice getting out of your box and that's ever so important um, and it is a perspective thing I think you know everybody functions really nicely if they're open to other people's opinions and open to new experiences and that's why when we're on holiday we talk to new people we talk to strangers whereas when we're at home traveling to work in the box we don't we don't talk to other people and and that's a real shame and I always make an effort to converse with strangers some of them look like look at me like I'm completely bonkers and I just find that kind of funny anyway the hardest thing for me and this is an ongoing challenge and I'll, I'll put my hands up and freely admit it is I'm at my best when I'm on an expedition when I'm talking to people and you know I feel completely free but when I come home and I'm it's taken me a while just to almost get to the sustainable stage where I am now in my career it's taken me a while to, to get home and, uh, and be just as happy and I'm not most of the time and I'm still trying to work out why and, and how I can be because on the whole picture although I know I'm, I'm, I'm doing good stuff I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with, with kind of what I provide to, to other people which is just as important as what, what you provide to yourself unless you're a hermit and I'm not um, but I, I do want to come back and be happy just as happy at home as I am when I'm away um, and that's that's an ongoing challenge and I think it's just about me balancing myself out and working out how I'm wired and it's okay that I don't have the answers to that yet because I know at some stage I will um, and the more people I meet and the more people I, I meet who are happy and willing to share their ideas eventually I'll just take the the bits that everyone has that work for me and um, and that's how we we grow as humans I'm learning as I go along, um, but with Expedition 1000, I've got I've got another 23,000 mile journeys to undertake over the next few years, um, and and it may be another 10 before I get all of them done. But it's it's really a way just to harness everything that I've learned so far, um, and just encourage people in different ways to just experience new stuff themselves. It doesn't have to be travelling. It could be oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and do that hobby, which is just down the road and only takes up a couple of hours of my week. You know, I don't feel the need to go and travel a thousand miles, that's cool. Um, but just doing something new is, is ever so important to, to all of us because doing new things helps us grow. If we don't do anything new, we just stay the same. And it's, it's really that simple for me. So every year, if I can do new stuff, 
um, and reach more people with that, then then brilliant. So if if this this interview is kind of tweaked at anyone's heartstrings, then please just just get on my website. You know, put your put your address on the mailing list and get on my Facebook or Twitter or or any of that, and you know, just engage with me. It's really nice to to hear about people's thoughts and and opinions, whether it's on what I'm doing or what they're doing, and. Uh, well, I think we're just drawing together a really big network, which is, which is what you guys are doing, and it's what I'm trying to do. And I think if we all think the same, let's work together. It makes life a lot easier. Already, this road, my time on it, has been one of the highlights of my life. A temperate breeze from dark skies to wet grass. We fell in a field, it seems now, a thousand summers past.